Writing online is a career fast track, but with over 203 million freelance writers worldwide, how can you stand out from the crowd? Peak Freelance gives you the tools to find better clients, raise your rates, and focus on doing work you enjoy. Plus, it gives you access to a supportive community of like-minded freelancers and experienced writers who make a living writing. All Access members unlock a library of resources, templates, and expert interviews to grow and scale your business. Join Peak Freelance today. Welcome, Welcome to, to Freelance Spinners! Michael Keenan and... Ashley Cummings. Hey, hey. I just want to say, oh, yeah. Ashley just brushed her teeth because her tongue was green from candy, and it's, it smells great sitting so next to me right now. It's amazing. Michael decided to give me a very green staining candy right before we started our video. So, you're welcome. Yeah, so the first thing that we wanted to start with is client horror stories. Client horror stories. <laughs> so, Ashley, I mean, we've all had some really shitty clients, right? Like, right. I mean, I've, I've fired clients before, uh -huh. and that's something we can get into and talk about. Um, but I want to hear first, like, what is kind of like the craziest thing a client has done to you and why was that not okay? So I don't know if this is the craziest, but it's certainly the most annoying. Mm. And I count it as a horror story. Actually, all these stories are going to be annoying. But one time I had a client, came highly recommended, friend in the industry, things like that. And so we entered into a contract. I sent my like this is, these are the deals of the, you know, these are the deals of our freelance agreement. Mm -hmm. This is how much you're going to pay me. This is key. This is what I'm going to deliver. So I got the topic, did my job, city clackety clack, beautiful article, sent it on. And <laughs> when the time came to pay me, I sent my invoice and it was like, pay me a hundred thousand dollars. Just kidding. It wasn't that much. Oh, Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. No. Be amazing. <laughs> Great. No, it was like, pay me my rate, obviously. What is and your rate? My rate is a dollar per word, typically. Okay. Sometimes a dollar twenty-five, sometimes fifty cents if it's a recession. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how that's for we are. <laughs> Desperation. Depending on how much people are actually spending. Yeah, we can talk about that another time. Yeah. Down. Yeah, I can't remember what my rate was at the time, but anyway, so she like so I sent in the invoice and she sent me an email back and it said, so the other freelancer I hired are doing it, it are, is doing it at this rate. Can you just do it for that instead? And so it was half my rate, which is like, we'd already agreed upon it. It was half my rate. Sorry, it's so, still a little hot hearing that. Can, she just said, not hot in a good way, hot yeah. in a bad way. <laughs> like, hot, I'm like, I'm sweating over here. She asked you to do it. For a different rate? Literally for half my rate. Half so rate. if it was, let's say that I was charging her a dollar per word. She's like, this one is doing it for 50 cents. I signed your contract. We agreed upon this. Will you do it for that? And guess what I said? Yes. I said no. I said no. <laughs> I said no. How far along were you in your freelancing? Like, this was our first assignment. Oh, in my career? Yeah, yeah. Like how, when this did this happen? probably in, I bet this was 2018, I want to say. Okay. So it was like, like pre-pandemic. Yeah. And... I said, absolutely not. <laughs> like nice <laughs> over an email, like, oh, I'm so glad that that freelancer is charging you really terrible rates. But <laughs> I just said, no, we, you already signed my contract. We agreed to these terms. Anyway, she gave the invoice and then we didn't do anything, any other work. So. Well, I said cheers to sticking up for yourself. Yay, so. cheers. Because cheers you're that. watching. Mm. Anyway, so. For you, not, oh, sorry. <laughs> Freelance I just want to yell freelance bitters all the time. Freelance bitters. So I'm not sure if that was a horror story. Do you feel like that's a horror story? I feel like it's just like, this is unacceptable. So maybe my advice, the takeaway for that would be, even if you send a contract and they sign it, mm. make sure that they understand what the terms of the agreement are, which is not your responsibility. But if you feel like you're not sure, maybe just like, be like, hey, just a reminder, this is what, I don't know. Is that a good idea? To like to like reiterate like this is what's happening. No, I say but, like, like before you do a whole entire project, and then they're like, "Whoa, I didn't look at your contract. Did it really so expensive?" No, not at all. I wouldn't even say to follow up and like reiterate my rates to people and be like, "This is what you signed. Yeah, these are my rates." Like you know, which is what you, I get. If you don't like it, like 
you still have to pay for the assignment. And then just Which is what I did, right? Yeah, yeah, you did that. I don't know, did you do it? I did, no, 100%. Oh, okay. I said, I said, you absolutely, I mean, I just said, no, I'm not lowering my rates. You signed my contract. Here's the invoice. Okay. And then they paid it, because that's what you're supposed to do. Well, gold star for you, honey. We don't need clients like that. But we didn't work with it. I mean, we, me, myself, and I did not work with. Cheers! What's your freelance <laughs> horror story? <laughs> okay. So ready? So my freelance horror story, I gotta be I gotta be pretty honest. Like I don't have too many like freelance horror story like like mega catastrophes that have happened before. Um because I really just <laughs> you <laughs> at your job because I just I'm just, I don't even know why. I'm just really good at my... No, I'm just kidding. I'm not actually that great. I'm just... I just talk a lot and, you know, whatever. So I do. You know, I talk a lot. So one time... All right. So I had this client and they were onboarding for a content program, right? So they were hiring me to write however many blog posts a month. I don't even remember. It was a couple of years ago now. And... They've seen my samples. We did actually two pilot projects together. So they already knew my... Wait, you did two pilot projects? Two pilot projects. Were they paid? Yeah, of course they were paid. Okay. Why wouldn't... Ew, why they wouldn't were they paid. paid. They're... You make people pay for your pilot projects. <laughs> Amen. Go Amen. On. So so these these people, they pay by check, by the way. Just to, just to give you a sense of like how they are as clients. They paid by check, very old school. <laughs> okay. So, but they read my they they read my samples. We did two pilot projects together. Everything went well, and then once we actually passed the pilot projects and signed the contract contract, like the final contract, like not just like a deliverables, you know, like this is a pilot project, right? So we were doing an ongoing um, like production, and this client, I interviewed her, I wrote her article for her, and they came back and just like totally ripped apart every everything everything yeah. everything like and i'm fine i'm not like egotistical to a point where i think like edits are bad like i love editors i like working okay. with editors Great. but the thing was these people weren't editors they was the ceo <laughs> and like one of her like strategy minions you know so they're not even people who like know <laughs> they're not even they weren't even people who know how to write content or edit content but it felt like right after we actually locked into a contract together they were like all of a sudden everything sucked and they wanted everything to be rewritten and blah. And I just was like, I'm not rewriting this entire article. Like right. I literally wrote, I wrote in the email back. I said, this is the style that I have. I was mm -hmm. like, you knew this going into my two pilot projects, two pilot projects, like and nothing. We never got feedback this bad before, but now once you actually have to pay, you know, I think it was like eight, $9,000 a month for the, like the retainer. Via Pony Express. <laughs> Via Pony Express. Okay. All of a sudden now you want to like dictate everything that I'm saying and doing. Like, right. no way. Like that's not even, that's not even how the project, pi the pro pilots were ran. And I'm not going to sit here and rewrite an entire uh, article for free because it was like everything. And again, like I have a, I have basically a template of how I write articles. Like okay. it's the very same, like. It's the same structure, just depending on if it's a listicle or how-to or a thought leadership piece, which I don't really do anymore, but I did back in the day. So I was like, these are the same art. It's the same type of article, right? So we went back and forth. Eventually, I, and here's the kicker, I never got paid for the pilots. Stop it. Yeah. So the pe the invoice was still pending for the pilots. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did so, you get paid for the project? No. Did you get paid for anything? I didn't get paid for anything. So what happened was... After going back and forth, I said, look, I'm not writing this article over. Mm -hmm. I was like, Good. and I was like, I'm not, we're not going to work together anymore. You can keep your articles, you can keep your money and mm -hmm. let's just call it, you know, let's go our separate ways. And that's how that ended at that Christmas. And it was a <laughs> very Christmas. Merry Christmas because <laughs> I just knew. And, and again, like it would have been fine if it was one article and these people were like, Hey, like this is not what we want because then we could have just called it quits there. But why do two pilot projects together and then once the retainer gets signed, all of a sudden, like it, right. all of a sudden everything changed. And I'm like, we're writing SEO, like we're writing search friendly content here. Like I know how to do this. Like mm -hmm. and I know like the structure and where to place the quotes and the images and you know. So it's not like my first rodeo here. Right. And I was just so annoyed. And but for me, like. Those were red flags. And for me, I was like, this Do you think is... that the pilot projects, two pilot projects were a red flag? No, because everything for went me, really that would smooth. Be... Everything went really smooth. Okay. And I was fine with that. I was fine with it. Okay. I didn't care. 
because they were going to pay me really well. Right. And then I was like, I guess the money's not worth it. So, <laughs> so what would you say to like other freelancers in this situation to like avoid that? Is there anything that you can do or is that just like part of the gig? No, it's just part of freelancing, I think. You know, like I think yeah. sometimes you just have to, you know, sometimes you're not the right fit for your client and mm -hmm. that's okay. And I've learned that for me, that's fine. Like, I don't care if I'm not the right fit for a client and that's, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Like I know, depending on where you are, like in your freelance journey, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, it's harder to bite the bullet and say like, fine, I'll miss out on that money. And this wasn't a time when I was making a lot of money. Like right. it, it hurt my pocket to get rid of that client. You know, mm -hmm. they were going to be a big retainer, but you know, my, my mental health is way more important than, than the money. And I was just like, I don't want to, like, this isn't worth it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so I'm going to be writing double articles over and over again. Right. Um, and they were like very particular, like they weren't constructive edits. They were just like. Those kind of edits. They were crappy edits. They're those kind of edits. Edit, those kind of edits. <laughs> edits are, edits there are, are, there's true though. There's like really, really productive edits that are like, you can tell that the editor knows what they're doing and they're bringing value and they're like. But that's the thing. She wasn't an editor. That's why right. like, it was the CEO of the company like ripping apart too. everything. Right. And, that's and I was different. just like, this is stupid. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. doing this. Like, especially if you're going to be like in charge of all this shit. Like, why right. don't you focus on more important things? Like For sure. hire someone who actually knows content, you know, and can, like put together a content team. And that was kind of my, my gist. I have another horror story too. Go on. Um, oh, you want me to go on? Do you have <laughs> I one? Have an, I have an editing one. Oh, somewhere. let's talk about that then. This episode is brought to you by Peak Freelance, the community for writers who want to grow their business, make more money, and get incredible clients. Check us out today. So if you follow me at all, you know I have a huge respect for editors. I have an editor that I employ. She's great. She she reviews every single thing that I write. And then it goes to the editor of the client that I'm working with. And I, I love their feedback. I implement their feedback. They're like, they are good at what they do and they make me a better writer. So I have a huge respect for people who are like editors in the industry, right? Yeah. But I did have, I had one client and just a little bit of background. Um, Wait, so, before background? Yes. Dance party. <laughs> 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 I hope this doesn't get edited out. Dance party. All right. <laughs> Tell me Michael, more about your editor. Michael had two new movies. And I did not. <laughs> she just had a little more than me. But. <laughs> no. Okay. So, <laughs> back, to, back to business. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm just sitting here like plastic I'm like, smile. Back like. on like fun track. Fun. Okay. Yes. I have a lot of respect <laughs> for editors. Background. That's where I was. Background. So background, I have a lot of background in creative writing. I've published academic articles, which is a different thing, right? And then I've been freelancing. <laughs> Stop loving me. <laughs> I have been freelancing <laughs> for 11 years. Um, 11 years? Yes, 11 I'm years. A I'm a vet. So I've been freelancing for 11 years. So I, I get the nuance to the different styles, right? Like when you're publishing an academic article, it's very different than when you're publishing a blog post. Uh, so I had this freelancer, freelance or client, freelance client, and we'd been working together for probably like six months. And they were like, yeah, this is great. Everything's awesome. And then you guys will relate to this. You know that this happens. You gals and pals. You gals and pals. Guys, gals and pals. <laughs> so, so anyway, so the client's like, okay, so I had my wife take a look at what you wrote. Oh, this one. <laughs> and she had this an academic one. background, which like, yes, you have a lot of experience in academic writing and you want it to be a certain way. And I get that. And that's great. But academic writing is 100% not the same as writing for the internet. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> so he's like, my wife had this feedback on the article. I'm just wondering like what you think about it. And so... I have a really hard time with conflict. Typically I'm like, I will do whatever you say, but I was just being brave. And I was like, you know what? I have been doing this at this point for like nine or 10 years. And yeah. I was like, I was just like, I'm just gonna be honest this time. And I said, you know, I actually prefer the way that I wrote it. <laughs> and these are the reasons why. You know, I think you're wrong. So. <laughs> Which I don't usually do with clients. I usually am like, okay, like, because usually it's like, if, if I miss the mark for whatever reason, 
that means I missed the mark. And I'm like, yeah, oh crap. Like, but I'm like, we've been doing this for six months. I've been doing this for nine years at this point. Like I know what, like how to make something drink. I know how to make something stand out. I know how to make something so that it like appeals to readers who are reading on the internet and not in an academic journal. Mm -hmm. And her edits were very, very academic, I should say. And so he didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully he paid my, he paid my invoice, but then he never talked to me again, which again, I didn't like. And I, I understand it's like, it's your wife and someone's coming and they're saying like, I prefer the way that I wrote it. This is my expertise. And this is, you know, this, this is why I wrote it this way. I understand that. Yeah. But I do not agree with it. I say hire the person who does sound, for example. Uh, if you yeah. don't do sound like we don't, then you don't have to spend five hours setting up the sound, which mm. is what we did. Literally, guys, gals, and pals. Like, <laughs> what, what a mess today was. Like, we were. <laughs> it's terrible. I'm so, like, I'm very bad at audio and video stuff. Um, but, you know, Ashley flew from uh, Salt Lake City. To Utah, Mexico. To Mexico, to Guadalajara, Mexico, where <laughs> I live. And uh, we just thought we could do it ourselves. <laughs> so next time we're definitely bringing her husband, who's a producer, to mm -hmm. do it for us. Yeah. And we learned our lessons. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but yeah. But the same thing. It's like if you hire a writer, and I think that it's okay to communicate to someone like, this is my expertise and these are my results and this is what will happen. And uh, like, you can expect like X, Y, and Z hire me right yeah and if we like take this in a different direction i think it's okay to say this is not going to appeal to like the general your general audience and your general reader readership for these reasons even if you get fired <laughs> even if you get fired yeah so for me that's a client horror story just because like at this point in my career i feel like i know what i'm doing i 100 percent absolutely will accept feedback i think that feedback is critical. so helpful really it's critical my editors make me a better writer, but my editors typically are people who have written for the internet for as long as I have, and they make me better, and it's great. But I don't want some schmo, yeah. <laughs> some wife coming in, just kidding, <laughs> or husband, some, <laughs> some, some wife, that some sounds like, wife coming and in, like handmade style or something, um, <laughs> coming in and being like, we no, should do this. And it's like, no, you have an academic background. That's different than what's happening here. Yeah. The end. What's your second story? The end. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this one up real quick. So only because we we're trying to, oh, there it is, get to it. but so, all right, so I have this one client who I still have and I've been working with them for almost five years. 2023 will be five years. I can't say the name. <laughs> what do you mean? I can't say the name. I know, I know. You know, we have the, NN, the what are those called? NDAs. NDAs, the NNAs. I was going to call it. I don't even know what an NNA is. The NSA, the, the NSA, the National CIA. Security Agency are coming for me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but so I have this one client, I'm working with them for almost five years. I still work with them. Um, and they had an internal thingy going on with their, with their accounting guy. And apparently there were some internal struggles, we'll leave it at that. And I was never getting paid on time for like 18 months. Oh no. I had to send an email every fucking month. <laughs> To say my invoice is late, can you please pay it? And these are some these are clients I've been working right. with for a long time. And again, like it wasn't their like it wasn't my point of contact's fault and like you know that the invoice wasn't getting paid, it was something internal. But I guess it's like it became so normal that I was just like, oh, it's the 30th. Like I have to send my right. and I was doing bi-weekly bill bi-weekly billing with them. So it was every two weeks. I was the in, the art the invoice was late never mm -hmm. paid so I was like and it just became so normalized and then after I was like wait this is not normal like people should not be making you email them every week mm -hmm. to say like I mean every two weeks to say where's my invoice why isn't my invoice paid yet you know right. so that was like it's like not a super like crazy like horror story but it was annoying to never be paid on time right um, so. <laughs> That was just annoying. I have an idea. Yeah. Okay. Use some takeaway. Right. Some takeaways. Talk a lot. Some takeaways about what maybe people can do to avoid things that have happened to us. Yeah. The one is to require a deposit before you start working, mm -hmm. which I don't ever do. But other freelancers who are smarter than me do. Okay. So, and say, also, like, are you pointing at me because you think I do too? I don't know. I just know that some freelancers do. I don't know. Do I? Do you do that? 
I don't know. Do you require a deposit at first? Sometimes. I require a I deposit usually do it on like I usually do it on like if I feel like they're going to run yeah. away. <laughs> if they're going to like... Or if they suck. Like, I'm yeah. like, if, they, if I feel like they're going to suck as a client, I'm like, can I get a deposit? Like, yeah. I, I think also... I don't know. Like, I think that since... I think sending a contract, like, I've... For the most part, like, since I've started doing that, it shows to, to me that the client, like, has marriage together or whatever mm. like they kind of have it together but that's not true really because there's a lot of corporates that don't pay invoices oh, uh, that don't, don't pay like deposits that. okay and they won't pay you a deposit and you'll have to finish the work and then bill for it so i don't okay. think that's true and actually the whole 50 percent okay. down thing isn't always that amazing so, really yeah okay because i don't actually do this so i'm interested you know? to know a lot of people won't pay it. i think that's actually a whole other topic i do that sometimes when i do like things that are per project based yeah. Yeah. So that makes like more if sense. it's like a case study or if it's an ebook or if yeah. it's something like that, then I will require a deposit. I think another thing is like sometimes like freelancing is a little like iffy sometimes. Like you mm. kind of have to vet your clients a little bit. Yeah. I don't know what the solution is. <laughs> Tell someone smarter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, wait, what? <laughs> smarter than no, me. use like, Arlo. That's what the writer is yes. supposed to do. Use like a software that yes. you can just track all your shit That's in true. one place you all your invoices and just like use harlow that's an amazing tool for that and that keeps you true. keeps you on top of your point. shit so yeah harlow well, for the win harlow for the win yes i will say though that i haven't had a client not pay me for probably like six or seven years it was kind of something that happened in the beginning of my career as opposed to mm. the end of my career I, I haven't had anyone not pay me in probably six or seven years Good for you. i know but at the beginning it happened a lot yeah like i yeah. had I was telling Michael earlier when we were not preparing. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to prepare. No, yeah, when I was, <laughs> I was like a hundred weeks pregnant with my first child, and I wrote a bunch of website copy for this client. I sent it to them. They never paid me. It was like probably like oh yeah, the four thousand dollars. Yeah, it was like probably like four thousand dollars, and it just like never came, never came. I did have it in. I think I had it in Google Docs, and sometimes if that happens, I restrict access, mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh shit, can they pay me? Uh, interesting. Yeah. Well, your invoice was in Google Docs? No, 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 the content. Oh, oh the content. So, like, if it's like if they're not paying, I restrict the content. Oh. I can't remember if I did that for him or not, but that was sad. Oh, I like that. Yeah. It's a great move. Yeah. It's like if you're not paying for it, you don't get to keep it. Yeah. That's another good thing. Keep your document. Don't send like an attachment, like, keep it in a Google Doc. Yeah. You can always be like, da, 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 restrict. Restricts. Excellent. Well, what are your client horror stories? Share your client horror Share, stories with subscribe. us. Subscribe. Wait, which side is it on? I don't know. We haven't decided yet. It's on your side, I guess. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. And I'll look at she's all blurry in the back. Are you drunk? No. No. Oh. Wait, what? I thought the point of this was that we were both. Oh, yeah. I don't all know right. that we said that yet. Well, we're going to... Oh. We're going to drink more and then we'll come back. <laughs>